Hey guys, Jason here. In this video, we're going to talk about how much gain is too much gain for metal guitar. Now, this can be a very controversial topic, and I'll explain my preference at the end of the video. But first, let's dig right into the meat and potatoes. Hmm, I'm kind of hungry now. And I want to share two clips for you so that you can compare the tones. The first one is going to be with a lot of gain. And then the second one is going to be with the game backed off substantially. So let's listen to these clips. So what did you think about those metal tones and tell me how much gain is too much gain when you're recording metal guitars. Now again, the first clip you heard, I had the gain cranked up there quite a bit to 10 and I think the amp actually goes to 11, but it was cranked up almost all the way up. The second clip you heard, the gain was substantially decreased to five and a half. Now some of you think that that's pretty low, but I want to tell you why uh, why I did this comparison, but before we do that, let me just go through what I'm using. So, uh, I'm using the Positive Grid Bias Amp 2 plug-in with their Celestian package, and I'm using the Triple Tread Plate Amp Simulator. Now, that's based on the Mesa Boogie Triple Rectifier. But it's important to note that this concept that we're talking about today really applies to anything that you're using, regardless of the plug-in or if you're miking a live amp, if you got like a Mesa or Marshall or PV6505, Engel, whatever, if you're miking amp, the same concept applies. Or if you're using something like the Axe FX or the Kemper or the Helix, you know, the same concept applies to whatever you're using to record with. You know, you've still got that preference of gain, but more importantly, what gain level sounds best, not in your bedroom, but what gain level sounds best when you're actually recording your guitars, when you're laying those tracks. Too much gain sometimes is, well, too much gain. And sometimes, and I know we're metalheads, we just like more and more and more, but sometimes less is more, and let me tell you why. As I was recording this album, this is called Masterpiece, you know, I'm, I'm laying my, uh, 10th song down tomorrow and I've been recording the tracks for this uh, and I've got like one more to go after that but I got to thinking about you know I'm actually gonna back my gain off a little bit more than I have on my prior albums because one of the things that I felt like I was missing was some of the clarity you know I want those notes that I'm hitting uh, to have clarity to them I want every note to be distinguished I want that note to hit you in the face <laughs> actually I didn't mean it like that Anyway, <laughs> so I, I want those notes to speak out. And the problem is when you have too much gain, those notes can get very muddy, especially when you add in the drums, the bass, and multiple guitars, and if you have keyboards or whatever, you've got vocals. So when you add all of these components together, your mix can tend to be quite muddy and jumbled if you've got the gain on your guitars too high. So now I know I gave you an extreme example in the beginning of the video. I gave you like a super high gain versus, you know, kind of a low gain there. But I want to tell you my sweet spot, which is 
I didn't really record any of those. I should have gave you a clip of that, but you'll hear that on my next album. Uh, I like my gain setting really just a little bit higher than the low gain setting you heard. I like it to be between six and seven, but, but leaning more towards that six. Now, when I go back and listen to the clips at the beginning of the video, you know, I do like that five and a half, you know, gain setting that I had on there. Because you can hear, if you listen to the first clip, where the gain's cranked almost all the way up, it's just not as clear. When I'm palm muting, you know, some of that palm mute carries over to the next note, and when it's in the mix of everything else, it can sound a little jumbled and muddy. Whereas when you listen to the clip with the lower gain setting, man, the notes are just crystal clear. You, and you still, you know, think about lower gain settings, you still have that chunk, you know, it's still like a really awesome metal sound, but it's tighter. You know, again, it's all about clarity in your notes. And one more point I want to make before we wrap this up here is remember, the sound that you hear in your bedroom is usually not going to be the same sound or the same settings rather when you record those guitars. Because remember, when you're just jamming, yeah, you want that chunky sound, you want that meat, you know, and all that, and it sounds awesome. But when you're recording, you have to bring some of that down because you've got those other elements in there. Again, you've got that kick drum pounding. And you've got, you know, you've got the bass line, you've got the bass guitar going up the middle, and that's carrying in your bottom end. And then you've got your other guitar tracks. And again, I've told you guys this, and I've shared this in several videos. I always record two guitar tracks, and I hard pan each one. You know, if I've got that gain cranked up on both of those tracks, then they're really going to compete with one another in a bad way. Does the left win, or does the right win? Oh, damn, no. So it's important to really pay attention to your gain settings on your amp when you're recording those metal guitars. So guys, tell me in the comments how much gain is too much gain when you're recording metal guitars. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know uh, what you thought of the two tracks that you heard in the beginning. And, and please also let me and everyone else on here know uh, your settings, your gain settings and all your EQ settings and all that. If you can just post those in the comments, I'd be very interested to see those and hear from you guys. So thank you all for watching my videos. I do appreciate your support. And until next time, keep it metal.